Hey folks, welcome back to the channel, thank you for tuning in, hope you're doing well, and welcome to this album review. I'm here to talk about Afterburner, the ninth studio album by Dance Gavin Dance, post-hardcore veterans out of California, I believe, and a band that I have, uh, I will confess, never checked out in huge detail. I'll listen to their music in spurts. I'll go a long time without listening to them, and then sometimes I'll check out songs in you know bunches. And I do like a lot of the cuts that they've churned out over the years, and they do release music with some regularity, and they've had uh, lineup shifts and uh, changes in vocalists and stuff like that. Uh, Tillian Pearson is the current lead vocalist for Dance Gavin Dance, and I do prefer him over Kurt Travis and certainly over Johnny Craig. Ugh, don't get me started. Um, so, yeah, like I said, they put out content with quite a lot of uh, regularity, and now we have their newest album, Afterburner, which is being marketed to me, at least, and that's me using that for complete lack of a better word, marketed, per se, as an exportive uh, album. It's a progression in their sound and trying new things. Uh, they've The only knock on them, even among fans, which isn't really a knock, it's just an observation, is that the band uh, it just is very stagnant with their sound. A lot of the, every song and every album sounds the same. It's the same formula, the same uh, song structure, same sound palette, uh, but they've earned the right to do it, and it's worked, and they have a devoted fan base, and their fans love their music, so they have the right, they have a bit of seniority, I guess you could say, to do whatever they want and not worry about uh, displeasing critics and stuff like that. So, let me just hop right into this. So, Prisoner, the lead-off single and album opener, swells with some funky, grooving instrumentals right from the off. It's unmistakably Dance Gavin Dance, but it still manages to be fairly exportive, and it's a great use of Till's vocals. He even screams at one point, which was kind of uh, un un unexpected. Lyrics lie, uh, swells with some mothership vibes. Till goes up and down the scales as he sings, I learned to love myself for who I am. And it is cool to see some earnest songwriting amidst the band's trademark zaniness with their songwriting. You should see some of their song titles, too. <laughs> uh, Matt Mingus's drums come to the forefront at moments, and that was another, it's another nice banger. Tinges of experimental prog rock on the song's bridge, and as I said, I like the drumming on this as well. Uh, Three Wishes has some slight shimmer on the guitars, and the band continues to merge these funkier overtones with their broader post-hardcore sound. One in a million follows the same mold. It explodes with a quick start before and it just as quickly settles into this nice groove revolving around Till's glowing croons and the band's pre-existing penchant for funkier pop undertones. This song in particular gave me reminders of After Laughter era Paramore. I also was particularly fond of the hook as Tillian exclaims, Heal my soul because I'm one in a million. Anyway, we continue. Parody Catharsis is very reliant on Till's Vox vocals. <laughs> Probably his best vocal performance on this album. Uh, John Messa screams carry the verses. This one is packed with nominally metalcore sensibilities, which are married with ostensible hip-hop tendencies that really come to the forefront here, and they will so again throughout the rest of the album. Again, this is a relatively experimental album. Uh, it's still undeniably Dance Gavin Dance and true to the, the core sound they've maintained over the years. But compared to their past material, this is definitely the one album I think is probably the most exportive, the most, not, not out of left field per se, but you get what I'm saying. Strawberry's Wake. Is there a better name for a Dance Gavin Dance song? Well, actually there is Pussy Vultures. Anyway, <laughs> um, this one reminded me of Betrayed by the Game from the album Mothership. Uh, Till's vocals solicit a little bit more emotional heaviness than some of the other cuts on this thing. You know I'm the enemy, he smoothly croons and he... Uh, he has a good voice and I, I'm definitely drawn to it. Born to Fail is definitely one of the heaviest songs on here. This one is undeniably metalcore influenced. John Mess's screams just, oh, they, they just slam. But we do see some more progression from the band. And this this is just my takeaway. Uh, don't get it twisted. Uh, maybe there are the eeriest traces of like 2010's emo creep their way in. I was getting like the super slightest uh, reminders of like Alisana maybe. That was just my takeaway. I'm probably doing a huge disservice to anybody who anybody who actually listens to this band's music religiously. Like, you're not a true fan. You don't know anything about this band. Please forgive me. Um, Night's Way. There's chugging guitars aplenty on the intro. Uh, the band has definitely found a groove by now. They're firing on all cylinders. And there's fiery electric guitar riffs. 
on this thing as well that just explode with a lot of inertia and we're treated to some great bass as well uh, and then another great vocal performance from till we're going down together he repeats emphatically and again this is just me again the the, the fiery riffs on the verses reminded me of crash the gates by yellow card go listen to that song and then this song night's way and tell me if when you listen to the guitar and the song structure you tell me if there's any comparison whatsoever this is just me i'm not pretending to be a, a huge fan of this band i am a fan in general but i'm not pretending to be a huge fan that like I know all this band's history I've tried to do my homework as best as I can but and then I, I and I only wanted to single out I confess I don't want to single out like the, the majority of the songs in here I really liked I'm sorry because there the full disclosure there weren't any songs I really disliked at all I just wanted to point out the, the highlight and single out the ones that I really did enjoy or felt were worth mentioning. So I'll just go right to Into the Sunset, which closes the album. Kind of a slow burn a little bit. They definitely exploit their last chance to experiment. These overtly hip-hop overtones and beats and bass lines take full control here. Uh, and while the band does their absolute best to put their spin on it, I definitely don't hate it. It really is the only truly jarring cut on here, especially compared to the other songs on here and certainly to the rest of their discography. Um, this is not a bad album by any stretch. This is a very good album. Uh, definitely a, another helping of vintage Dance Gavin Dance. Um, if you're a fan of this band already, you are going to eat this up all day. They, they know the lane they're in. They know the audience they cater to, and they know what their fans like, and they're just going to provide fans with the red meat. Still managing to experiment, and it does work a lot of times, but if you're a little more cynical and you're not ready for any kind of changes whatsoever, perhaps it might be a, b a bit of a warning curve, something to get it getting adjusted and used to. I'm going to give this album a 4 out of 5. Well, let me know what you thought of Afterburner by Dance Gavin Dance in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this review, smack the like button, hit the bell to get notified when I upload a new video, and be sure to subscribe. Until next time, my name is Seamus. Take it easy.